Ever since March started learning swordplay from Yenqing and Yunli, her voice has been absent on the Express. I wonder how well she's progressing. Where has she been these days? Before you got here. I already looked everywhere, but March 7th is nowhere to be found. <sighs> Forget it. Let's just assume she successfully skipped class. Actually, she's been quite diligent in her swordplay practice and hasn't taken many breaks lately. I think she deserves a day off. <sighs> Besides, <laughs> I used to skip classes even more than her back when I was still learning. If I was in the mood, I could train for three days straight. But if I wasn't in the mood, none of my seniors could find me. So, I can understand where she's coming from. Ah, no need. I asked you to come, so I won't send you away empty-handed. Since you're here, let me treat you to some tasty food. I'm more interested in you today. Let's walk and talk. Yingsha told me there's tasty food in Arum Alley. Let's go there. Dumplings and steamed buns. The buns are huge. A table for two, please. All right, come on in. What would you like? Well, we'll have one of everything on the menu. The entire menu? Hmm. Do you think it'll be enough? Don't worry, I've got enough money with me. Well, then I'll start making a few dishes, and if you need more, just let me know. Thank you. No, I've thought about it. She deserves a day off. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, not too much, actually. Grandpa said to never be stingy when it comes to making friends. So, how big is your appetite? Ah, then eat to your heart's content. Well, to be more precise, I'm interested in your sword. Yen Ching mentioned you before. He said that you're not to be underestimated, and that your weapon has a unique shape. I've always been curious about your sword. How the weight is distributed, what material it's made of, whether it contains any special ingenia, and what kind of sword techniques you use. Uh, seriously? A bat? Yeah, now more than ever. Ball back. Grandpa 
Papa said that a sword doesn't have to be constrained by its shape. So, in a sense, your bat is a sword too. He also said that a weapon mimics its master. So, your bat actually reflects your habits and nature, you know? <laughs> Let me guess. You're someone who doesn't follow the rules, enjoys improvising, and can handle yourself well against tough foes. Am I right? <laughs> Amazing, right? And I bet you always say something silly like, rules are made to be broken. I've come across so many sword wielders who acted all righteous and moral, but were really just liars. Their swords always told the truth, though. They told me that their wielders were just a bunch of frauds who relied on their divine weapons for everything. I've hunted down hundreds of swords like this so far, and every single one of them has been melted down. Yes. But only for those who cross the line. Melting their swords is my way of protecting those weapons. But just looking at a sword is not enough. Grandpa always says, words and expressions can be deceiving, but in a fight to the death, a sword's movements never lie. The war dance is just around the corner. You'll be participating, right? Miss Yun Li, for talented sword masters like you, the war dance is a perfect opportunity to show off your skills and make a name for yourself. But for people like him, who have already made significant contributions to the Xianzhou, they maybe don't need to prove themselves on the war dance stage. It has been a while, Mr. Nameless. And you are? Thank you for your introduction, Mr. Nameless. I'm Shi Kuei, and I work in the Palace of Astrum as the secretary for the Helmmaster. I apologize for interrupting your conversation. I happen to hear you discussing the war dance. And since this person is an old acquaintance, I thought I'd come and say hello. Yes, with the war dance approaching, many guests from afar are pouring in. Mr. Pavo here is one of them. He is from the distant planet Kalevala. Mr. Pavo's planet recently joined the Pan Cosmic Trade System. He brought his delegation here this time not only for business, but also to return something that belongs to the Xianzhou. Miss Shikwe, the word gift is perhaps more fitting than return. While it did once belong to the Xianzhou, we faced many tribulations to be able to deliver it here, so... It should be considered a gift. I apologize for my poor choice of words. Mr. Pavo's delegation brought a legendary Xianzhou sword that had been lost for centuries. General Huayan plans to personally thank them at the Palace Astrum and present the sword as a prize to the champion of the war dance. Mr. Pavo and I were actually on our way there. Since you two were talking so enthusiastically about the war dance, Maybe you'd be interested in joining us at the Palace of Astrum? Nice to meet you both. The journey to the Xianzhou Lafu wasn't an easy one, but the scenery here is worth it. It's completely different from my homeland. Once the formalities of the Palace of Astrum are finished, I'll find a quiet spot on this street and plant a seedling. And then my mission will be complete. <laughs> the Sword of Heroes will finally be returned to its rightful owners. I couldn't be happier. Oh, you're interested in my home planet? That's great. Your Excellency is welcome to visit us at any time. Even though the trade route just opened, Still might take around 200 system hours to get there from Pier Point, but our planet is really great. Ah, eh, sure, it's a bit cold, and the food is a bit repetitive, and our houses aren't as fancy as those on Pier Point, but that doesn't matter. We've discovered massive supernium deposits, and we're on the path to prosperity. 
Oh, you mean the Mieka Kivesa? It's an incredible sword. That weapon helped the legendary heroes of my homeland slay demons. That is highly revered. It also has the power to choose monarchs. All the ancient kings of Kalevala received a sign from the sword, showing they were worthy to rule the land. According to tradition, each monarch would plunge the sword into a stone, and only a hero recognized by the sword could pull it out and ascend to the throne next. Well, those are just legends from the past. No one today has witnessed it firsthand. Well, uh, times have changed, and now that we have a council in place, the idea of a sword crowning a king has become a joke. Besides, it wasn't a native of Kalevala who last pulled out the sword and recognized its connection to the Sienzhou ship. It was a visitor from afar. While the sword holds great historical significance for Kalevala, it doesn't truly belong to our world. The old-timers on council had a heated debate about whether to return the sword. They eventually unanimously agreed to let the Mieka Kivesa return to where it truly belongs. That's the best possible outcome. Wonderful. It's an honor to have so many people witness the sword's homecoming. Let's head to the Palace of Astrum together. Hmm? I know, right? Thanks to March 7th skipping class, we get to join in on the fun. Grandpa always asks me to go look at swords with him. But he hasn't said anything about this one. It's really weird. But now that we're invited, let's go and check it out. Time for a break. Silent mode activated. There you are. Come on, let's go to the ceremony together. Please allow me to offer a sincere compliment to my fair lady. Your beauty is as pure as a snow-white iris. Well, if it isn't my dear friend, glad to meet you again. Uh, who is this weirdo? Uh, I mean... Um, who is this knight? I am Argenti, a member of the Knights of Beauty. I was invited as a part of the Kalevala delegation to escort the legendary Mieka Kivesa back to the Sienjo. May I have the honor of knowing your name? Uh, my name is Yun Li. What a beautiful name! I wonder if you have ever heard the holy name of the pure and flawless goddess Adrilla. Oh, you're here, Yun Li. <laughs> Didn't expect you to be so well informed. Well, now that you're here, don't forget your manners. Mm, manners, manners. Come on, you won't find another granddaughter as polite and well-behaved as me. <sighs> Just remember, this is a very serious ceremony. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Mr. Pavo. Now, let the sword gifting ceremony begin. Before the uh, ceremony officially commences, I want to express my gratitude to the Knight Argenti. Thank you for enlightening us about the sword's origin and for escorting it here safely so that we may complete this ceremony. On behalf of the Kalevalan delegation, I, Pavu Kalestaya, am here to return the legendary Mieka Kifesa to the Sienjo Alliance, its rightful homeland. I'm truly grateful for Kalevala's noble act of returning the sword and for the Knight of Beauty's chivalry. Now, as we gather here on the Sienjo Lafu, I officially welcome the sword back to its homeland. Mieka Kifesa. It's a fitting name for a sword with such a legendary past. 
I still remember the name engraved on this sword the day it was forged. Gu Yin. It was forged by Hang Wang, a craftsman from the Ju Ming's Pyro Jaya Forge. Wait. A, a Hang Wang? Although its blade is worn and cracked, its essence remains as resilient as the Sienjo Cloud Knights. All it needs is some repairs and polishing by the skilled craftsmen of the Artisanship Commission to regain its former glory. I've decided to entrust this sword, Gu Yin, to the Lawfu Artisanship Commission for restoration. Furthermore, it will serve as the prize for the champion of the Lawfu War Dance. This sword will be wielded against abominations to protect our homeland and live up to the mission of the Kalevalan delegation that returned it from so far away. Thank you, General. It is an honor for Kalevala. Now, esteemed knight and delegation members, please head to the Artisanship Commission, where... No! This sword was forged by Hongguang! Yun Li! These esteemed guests have brought back your father's last work. Where are your manners? Oh, uh, I didn't realize this sword was actually forged by your father. Returning it to its rightful owner is, uh... Grandpa, give me that cursed sword right now! I'll melt away the remnants of that man's curse once and for all! Don't be rude, you and me. Apologize to our esteemed guests from afar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making a scene. But I have to melt down this cursed sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. Yun Li, please. Go, for now. <sighs> this is exactly why I didn't want you and Lee to know about this. I didn't want to create trouble, but... Trouble found its way here anyway. Perhaps it really is divine intervention. Could you please keep an eye on Yun Li for me? That is a tall order, but I'm counting on you. I apologize for the unfortunate interruption. Let us move on with the ceremony. Unless I'm mistaken, Yun Li should be around here somewhere. That's a hefty battleship there. Grandpa send you to look for me? <laughs> I bet he did. Really? <laughs> Thank you. Just so you know, I'm here just waiting for the perfect moment to snatch that sword. And once I have it, I'll melt it down before anyone can react. Don't even think about stopping me. No one can stop me. Grandpa sent you here. Surely he doesn't want you to help me. 
Have you heard of cursed swords? That sword is one. You've clearly heard a lot of folk tales. But that's not the kind of cursed sword I'm talking about. A cursed sword lets anyone, even a complete novice, wield it with insane skill. Just by holding the hilt, even the weakest rookie can brandish it with incredible speed and strength. I'm not joking around. And I'm not making up some crazy story. While a cursed sword grants instant abilities to its wielder, it comes at a cost. It's like continuously adding fuel to the forge. With each swing, the sword drains the wielder's blood and essence. Day by day, the fuel will run out, leaving nothing but an empty husk. <laughs> Soon enough, it will no longer be a person wielding a sword, but a mindless, killing machine, consumed by bloodlust and murderous thoughts. Oh, so you're familiar with Heliobai. That makes this much easier to explain. There was a lunatic swordsmith who infused metal blades with Heliobi, as he was obsessed with turning weapons into living things. And this is how cursed swords were made. I know, I shouldn't have caused a scene at the sword gifting ceremony. But I've thought this through. If I don't make a fuss now, that cursed sword will cause a whole lot more trouble. So it's better if it's me causing the trouble. By the way, aren't they supposed to be taking the sword to the Artisanship Commission for repairs? Why haven't they come out yet? Any ideas? <sighs> Looks like they're not going to show up here. I'll just head straight to the Artisanship Commission. It doesn't matter why Grandpa chose that sword. I won't let it fall into anyone else's hands. I'll track down every single sword he forged, and melt them down one after another. Just like I've been doing all these years. I have to go now. Is she planning to sneak into the Artisanship Commission and steal that sword? Maybe I should keep an eye on her. The Artisanship Commission is so big. Where could she be? Just a while ago, a girl came up to me, all fierce and demanding directions. She said she's a member of the Artisanship Commission. Do you know her? No idea who she is. If she really works here, how can she not know her way around? Oh, I see. That explains it, then. Explains what? It explains nothing at all. She said something like, I'm a member of the Artisanship Commission. Where do you keep your precious stuff? I got scared and pointed her toward Master Gongshu's warehouse, where he stores his arumatons. Wait, why did you give her directions? What if she's planning to steal something? Where else? Like I said, she was headed straight for the warehouse, where all the valuable arumatons are. Yeah, that place is filled with Master Gongshu's precious arumatons. I bet they'll give her a hard time. Good quality, good price, huh? What are you doing here? Look, 
If I get into trouble, it's my problem. I don't want to drag you into it. Fine. Let's smash these metal cans first. Then we can talk. Harmony and unison. Stars echo. Welcome to uh -huh. Go Nappy! Just free! Watch your head. Right! Investing in victory means playing the long game! Huh? Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off! <sighs> that was the last of them. Thank you for helping me out. This place is heavily guarded, but there's nothing but arumatons. Where is the arsenal? <laughs> Seems like not even those craftsmen know where the arsenal is. At this rate, we won't find anything. And Grandpa might take me away before I can do anything. <laughs> You're not really here to help me. You're here to stop me, right? You have a kind soul, but if you want to stop me, you'll have to prove yourself. <laughs> you probably think I'm being impulsive and unreasonable, right? No, really. Do I come across that way? <laughs> well, I guess I can't deny it. Seems like you've met a lot of people who don't tell you the whole story. <laughs> Look. I owe you an explanation. But this isn't the best place to talk. We need to find somewhere else. Let me be clear, though. I'm still pretty riled up. This... This is just a temporary break. I already told you about Guyan. The sword that was returned during the ceremony. It's a cursed sword, with a heliobus inside. And Hong Guang, the swordsmith who forged it, is my father. I rarely mention his name to anyone other than Grandpa. Maybe. Like you said, I've been avoiding having to talk about him. But as long as my mission to hunt down cursed swords continues, it's impossible to avoid the topic forever. For some reason, I feel like I can open up to you. Honestly, I don't remember much about him. All I know is that the Pyrogyre Forge used to be a bustling place, with people from all over coming to get one of his swords. They called him the greatest master craftsman since Yingxing. I didn't catch all the details, but I do remember seeing him forge those amazing swords while the visitors watched with smiles on their faces. I used to believe that craftsmen brought happiness to others. The swords crafted by the Pyrogyre Forge are famed across the stars. They possess exceptional sharpness and invincibility. <laughs> With these legendary weapons, even ordinary people can become skilled warriors capable of overcoming the most formidable opponents. But then, he became obsessed with becoming a famed swordsmith and started crossing all sorts of lines. He forged cursed swords that should never exist. 
And all those people who desired those twisted swords started flooding into the palace. However, just like Grandpa said, those who excel with the sword will eventually suffer by it. The palace was overrun with visitors from afar. Some left empty-handed. Others got swords that didn't fulfill their desires. And some even resorted to stealing. And in the midst of all the chaos my father created, he ended up being stabbed by one of the swords he forged. It was so sudden and unexpected. Everything went silent for a moment. All I could hear was the sound of bones breaking and blood pouring out. <laughs> I was frozen in place, unable to move. It was only when my mother pushed me away from the deadly swing of the cursed sword that I managed to escape. I don't remember much after that, except for the pounding of my heart and the sound of my own gasps of breath. I could hear the smiths in the pyrogyre forge shouting, Run away, Yunli. And the screams of agony. My tears wouldn't stop. And I couldn't see anything. I kept gasping for air until I collapsed in a pool of blood. General Huayan hadn't arrived in time, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you now. After that, General Huayan took me in and treated me like his own granddaughter. To me, he is a hundred times better than my sinful father. He taught me forging and swordsmanship. Hang Guang paid for his sins. But his troubled legacy must not go unchecked. According to the records, he forged a total of 1,382 Heliobus cursed swords. And 182 of them had unique designs. When I joined the Pyrogyre Forge for training, I made a vow to hunt down all those cursed swords. So far, I found 312 of them and Guyan will be my 313th. Like all the other cursed swords, I'll separate it from the Heliobus. Then, I'll melt it down and make it part of the Blade of Forged Remnants. <sighs> I've said my piece now. Even though it'll be tough for Grandpa, I still have to melt down the sword. Those travelers who came seeking Hong Wang's swords all came in the name of justice and honor. Most of those so-called great heroes were heartless killers. They are only called heroes because they won. Many of the cursed swords I've destroyed had honorable and grand names too. A legendary sword and a butcher's knife are often just different ways of describing the same thing. Hmm. Somehow, after talking to you, I feel like I've cooled off a bit. Well, I'll have an honest conversation with Grandpa tomorrow. And, and I won't take any action against Gu Yun until he gives me his reasons. <sighs> yeah, I shouldn't have done that in a public place. Anyway, thank you. We'll catch up tomorrow. I should go back to the Palace of Astrum and tell General Huayan what happened at the Artisanship Commission.
My granddaughter didn't cause any trouble, did she, young man? Sorry for all this trouble. You and Lee told you quite a bit. Now it's time for this old man to tell my side of the story. Uh, Han Guang was my beloved disciple. A rare genius not seen in the Pyro Gyre Forge since Ying Xing. However, talent can sometimes be a curse. He had an unusual fervor for forging, and he dreamed of forging a sword with self-awareness that surpassed that of humans. He believed it would make warriors invincible without any training. According to him, while weapons of mass destruction like Zhu Ming flames and alchemical arrows can destroy many enemies, true victory lies with soldiers who fearlessly fight, ready to lay their lives on the line. Usually, Xian Zhou swordsmiths infuse a basic level of awareness into their swords to make them easier to wield. But even then, soldiers need to experience countless battles to overcome fear and sharpen their instincts. So... <sighs> By infusing Helio Bai into swords, he managed to forge weapons that could grant their wielders strength and valor and even make decisions for them. However, weapons are different from regular tools. They are meant to kill, plain and simple. After countless battles, all the anger, fear, and bloodlust are soaked up by the Heliobi within the swords. The soldiers wielding them not only gain strength, but they also become consumed by the malice, turning them into puppets possessed by the swords. No matter how noble Hong Wan's intentions were, those weapons, soaked in blood, turned into cursed swords eventually. Later, Outworlders got wind of what he was doing and encouraged him to keep forging cursed swords. They came up with all sorts of reasons, from taking back their kingdoms to slaying demons. And you know what happened next. That massacre took her parents' lives, and the lives of many craftsmen in the Pyrogyre Forge. Yun Li managed to survive, but she couldn't escape the horrors of that day. I thought this sword could be an opportunity. I wanted to tell her that her father wasn't all evil, that even the man she resents so much managed to forge a true sword of heroes. I also wanted to find a chance to tell her about the history and origin of this sword, but not during the ceremony. As you saw, it wasn't a good time. I've instructed the Artisanship Commission to keep the sword safe in the arsenal. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask the people involved. Since my granddaughter mentioned talking to me tomorrow, I'll be waiting for her. By the way, you watched over her for quite some time. You must be exhausted, aren't you? <laughs> I'll be counting on you then. Time to go back and find that class skipping March 7th.
Right, everyone is here. It's time for questioning. Yu Li, I'm sure you understand why the official called you here, right? Yeah, but I didn't steal the sword. Now is not the time to use your reputation like that. If we don't recover the sword, we will be breaking our promise to the Lawfu and betraying the delegation. We're counting on you to find the truth, Official Daha. Yes. It's my duty to thoroughly investigate the case. Even though Yun Li is firm in her words, we can't just rely on her testimony. <sighs> After everything, the sword still got stolen. <sighs> they should have given it to me from the beginning. In this case of Gu Yun's theft, everyone involved seems suspicious to some extent. Miss Yun Li is the main suspect. First, during the sword gifting ceremony, Yun Li openly expressed her intention to steal the sword. She even mentioned it multiple times. After the ceremony, she broke into the Artisanship Commission and destroyed Arumatons in an attempt to get the sword. Am I right? <laughs> That's true. The Realm Keeping Commission inspected the arsenal where Gu Yun was stored, and there were no signs of forced entry through the doors or windows. The only possible entrance or exit was a small window gap, just a few inches wide. Hey, hey! It's just a theft. The box containing Gu Yun was opened and the sword went missing, but none of the other swords in the room were touched. Which means... Well, uh, I do know about the box and the cursed sword. Exactly. The suspect had a clear motive and took only Guyu. So, besides the ceremony participants, only the delegation members had access to the sword. Argenti? Oh, that knight of beauty. <sighs> he was with the delegation when they handed over the sword to the Artisanship Commission. You might not know, but he's the one who recognized the sword's origin on Kalevala and escorted it back to the Sienja. In other words, he's the one who made it possible for the sword to come home. So... He wouldn't have gone through all that trouble to bring it to the Law Fu if he wanted to keep the sword for himself, right? Hmm. In that case, why would they return it to the Sienjo in the first place? Hmm. That makes sense. The delegation, led by the Knight of Beauty, delivered the sword to the Artisanship Commission. The craftsmen who received it testified that they didn't take anything from the arsenal. Master Gongshu checked the work records, and I questioned all the craftsmen and apprentices who were on shift at the time. But I didn't find any suspicious individuals. So... Did you steal it? Then stop choking around. I can prove that he came to me after leaving the Artisanship Commission, so he couldn't have stolen the sword. To put it simply, not everyone who's seen the sword has been to the Artisanship Commission, and not everyone who might want the sword has seen it. 
So, the only remaining suspect is Miss Yun Li. <laughs> Fair enough. So... I didn't steal the sword. Well, when you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. If you want to prove me wrong, you'd better come up with some solid evidence. Let me gather my thoughts. I need to help Yun Li clear her name. Did we miss any clues? Who could have thought that the Mieka Kivesa would be stolen? And that the prime suspect is General Huayan's granddaughter? Regardless, we've accomplished our mission. And now it's the Sienjo's problem. By the way, why did that girl call it a cursed sword? It's quite upsetting. That's enough, young man. Now let me get something straight. From Kaluvala, this sword has always been highly revered. The first master of the Mieka Kivesa slew countless demons and then passed it down to a line of wise monarchs. The monarchs would heed the guidance of the hero spirits within the sword and gain insight into defeating their enemies. What is, uh, Helio? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, never mind. The point is that the Mieka Kivesa did help the ancestors of Kalavala build a strong foundation. It's definitely not a cursed sword. make things difficult for official Dahao. Let's do this his way and prove my innocence. If I can find that cursed sword, I can prove my innocence right away. There's something else bothering me. Why would the thief take the sword but leave the case behind? Did they melt down the sword like I wanted to? Maybe. But if the case was too much trouble, wouldn't it be too conspicuous to carry around the sword like that in plain sight? Yes, I received your message yesterday and went to the arsenal to check on it. But when I went back this morning, all that was left was the case. I don't know anything else, so asking more questions won't help, I'm afraid. However, as the Master Artisan of the Artisanship Commission, I've got to clarify something. Even though the sword was stolen, this commission is still highly secure. Wait, no. I just remembered. My precious Arumatons were smashed. <sighs> Yun Li says she didn't steal the sword, and I am willing to believe her. But I know well that Yun Li can be impulsive. So if she did steal the sword on a whim, I won't show her any favors. You were with Yun Li yesterday, young man. So you have the chance to prove her innocence. Is there anything you need to ask me? No. She was still mad at me, so she didn't come by. If she had come with you, she wouldn't be a suspect right now. After the ceremony, Argenti carried the sword case, and together with the delegation, they were escorted by the Cloud Knights to the Artisanship Commission. The artisan there confirmed that the sword was safely stored. I'm counting on you, then.
So, the thief took the sword from the case without picking the lock. Why is this flower petal inside the case? If you've found any clues, feel free to tell everyone. Thank you. But... I'm not sure if I can convince Mr. Da how. A hundred percent sure. Fine. Let me go through my reasoning again, and you can interrupt if anything feels off. Throughout the entire incident, there was only one suspect who broke into the Artisanship Commission, and that was Miss Yoon Lee. Your statement isn't quite accurate. Argenti, the delegation members, and even me, we were all at the Artisanship Commission at some point. True. But they all left after delivering the sword. And the craftsman overseeing the handover confirmed that they couldn't have left with the sword. We looked into it as well. Before Gu Yun was handed over, the Psy Crane at the entrance of the Artisanship Commission captured you leaving. But there's no record of Miss Yun Li leaving. Why would I dare leave through the main entrance after smashing the Arumatons? Throughout the entire incident, there was only one suspect who broke into the Artisanship Commission, and that was Miss Yun Lee. Miss Yun Lee caused a ruckus at the Artisanship Commission trying to take away Gu Yun, but you stopped her in her tracks. What Da Hao said seems right. Exactly. So at least Yun Li didn't steal the sword at that time, because we were at the Arumaton warehouse. If your testimony is reliable. I'm not implying anything, but we need to scrutinize every piece of evidence. Miss Yun Li caused a ruckus at the Artisanship Commission trying to take away Gu Yun. After bidding farewell to you, Yun Li pretended to leave, but snuck into the arsenal alone and stole Gu Yun. After Yun Li and I went our separate ways, I messaged Master Gongshu to inform him about the incident. And much later, Master Gongshu told me the sword was confirmed safe. So up until that point, Yun Li couldn't have stolen it. Uh, can I prove this? After bidding farewell to you, Yun Li pretended to leave, but snuck into the arsenal alone and stole- Wait, you messaged Master Gongshu? I had no idea. Well, that's some solid proof right there. However, it only proves the sword wasn't stolen up to that point. Uh, I didn't- After bidding farewell to you, we haven't found any other suspects or evidence. Looks like you're missing some crucial evidence. There are no signs of the arsenal being broken into, so... <sighs> no, the fact that there are no signs of a break-in is suspicious in itself. Which piece of evidence should I use to convince Dahao? We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. I carefully examined the lock of the sword case, and there were no signs of tampering or damage. What does that mean? As to why the case was never locked in the first place, only the people who delivered it to the Artisanship Commission would know. Plus, I found something else inside the case. Which piece of evidence should I use to further convince Daha? We haven't found any other suspects or evidence. I found this in the crevice at the bottom of the case. A uh, rose petal? Huh. I must have missed it during the search. But why was there a petal inside the case? I don't know. But I do know that wherever that Knight of Beauty goes, he always leaves behind a trail of rose petals that's almost impossible to clean up. My thoughts are a mess. Let me sort them out. The sword case was never locked. 
which is evidence that only someone who delivered the sword could have done that. And the rose petal was probably left behind by that knight of beauty. But how did he manage to take the sword from the Artisanship Commission? Why did he steal it after returning it here? And why would he leave that petal in the case? I know. Guyun flew out of the case on its own. The Knight of Beauty only unlocked the box to aid its escape. Don't be ridiculous. How can a sword escape from a case on its own? Hmm. You've never seen a flying sword before? I, uh... I've only heard about the Mieka Kifesa being able to fly in Legends. But even if it could fly, why would the Knight of Beauty do this? Like I said, the sword contains a Heliobus. Argenti must have been under the control of the sword. Maybe he was under its control even before you arrived on the Lofu. Official Daho, where can we find that knight? Uh, let me see. Uh, uh. The docking location of Argenti's ship, the one and only. Let's go. We've got to find Argenti before that sword completely takes over his mind. Time for a break. Silent mode activated. Success and failure. You can't change it no matter how long. I've been waiting for you here for quite a while. Knight of Beauty. You're the one who stole Guyon, right? Hand it over. You have no idea how dangerous that cursed sword is. Dangerous? In my humble opinion, the real danger is always the hand wielding the weapon. Yes, I did. As a Drilla's knight, I've sworn to live in poverty, and I abhor theft. I had to leave behind a rose petal in order to keep my promise to Master Guyan and uphold my knightly oath. What? What do you mean? I agreed to assist Master Guyan in its escape from the Sienjo. As the person who pulled it from the stone monument, captivated by its beauty, I must not let it down. I couldn't stay in the arsenal to convince the craftsmen, nor did I want to take the sword like a thief. That's why I left behind a small piece of evidence that pointed to my identity in the hope of an open and honest conversation with you. Whatever your reasons are, you're planning to take the cursed sword away from the Sienjo. Hand it over to me! Back then, it was the beauty of Master Guyun that impressed me. So I willingly embarked on the journey to return the sword. But unfortunately, Master Guyan's homeland is no longer the ideal place for it to return to. As a knight of beauty, I must not abandon it halfway. Oh no. He's completely captivated by the power of that cursed sword. The solution is right in your hand. Captivated? No, I am touched by Master Guyan's flawless beauty. To be honest, I'm confused why none of you can understand this sword. This is quite heartrending. I've already made up my mind to take Master Guyan away from this Yenjo. That cursed sword has messed with your ability to think. But I'll break you free from its grip. I'll shatter its illusion. And the sword itself. Fair lady, if you're intent on taking away this person, this sword that is under my protection, please engage me with a fair duel according to knightly etiquette. 
As a representative of this duel, I, Argenti, challenge you. I swear on the spirit of chivalry, in front of Adrilla the Beauty, that I will represent Master Guyan in this duel. If I win, you will allow Master Guyan to leave the Sienja with me. And if you best me, Miss Yunli, I'll accept my defeat and turn Master Guyan over to you. Do you accept my challenge, Miss Yunli? Fine. Let's see whose desire is stronger. Your desire to take it away, or my desire to hunt down all cursed swords. Show me what you've got. You're not going to use Guyan to fight for victory? Well, I know a thing or two about swordplay, and a proper duel like this. A knight should rely on the skills he's honed day and night. You're a real weirdo. Put forth all your might. All of it. The flesh Rise to the challenge. Stars echo. No more time. Go nappy. Rise to the challenge. Answer me. Free. Knowledge, the measure of truth and falsehood. Bear witness. Let the duel commence. Rise to the challenge. Zero points. Let's try to cut her Watch your head. Free. The flesh will put forth all your might. Mediocre. All in. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. For sure. I've lost. According to the rules of a knight's duel, I should keep my promise and hand over the sword to you. But before I do that, I hope that you, as the winner, might have the mercy and listen to Master Guyan's past experiences. This sword has been cursed since the day it was forged. Place it in front of me, and let me destroy it. Do what she says, Knight. But... You've done so much for me already. It's time for me to face her alone. I'm weary of fighting. I just want to share my past with you. To explain why I wanted to escape. After that, I'll leave my destiny in your hands. Are you afraid to witness my past, little girl? Afraid? <laughs> well, you do have a different aura from other cursed swords. But you're just trying to use my curiosity to lure me in. Well, you know best that a single touch won't snatch away anyone's sanity. <clears throat> Fine. Show me your past. It's already impossible to contact the main Cloud Knight forces. What awaits me will be a long and lonely war. Follow me. Is this your memory? I didn't feel it when I was in the thick of battle, but now it's freezing me to the bone. <sighs> Your 
were indeed a masterpiece from the Xianzhou Juming. If you hadn't taken control of my body, I probably would have been decapitated in that fight. Quiet, and stay alert. Boris and wolf troopers never give up the hunt. <laughs> hey, just relax a bit. It's been over 300 days since we were both stranded on this planet. The transmitter never rings, so I guess we can't count on that anymore. The people on this planet still use beasts to pull their carts. Obviously, there's no way they can help us fix the star skiff. <sighs> Looks like we're stranded on this forsaken planet for the rest of our lives. Uh, the rest of a Sienjo native's life could be terribly long. Are you feeling any desperation, all by yourself in this hostile world? Yeah, a bit. Perhaps. When things get too rough for you to handle, just leave everything to me. No need to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Yeah, sure. If I really can't handle things anymore, I'll leave my body to you. But now is not that time. Do you really think you can oppose an entire Borsan army with your limited skills? What are you holding out for? It's true that I'm stranded here. But it seems like that Borisan pack is in the same boat. By the way, Guyan, do you know what a seed is? A seed may seem insignificant, but with careful cultivation and time, it can grow into a huge, unwavering tree. You said that the rest of a Sienjo native's life could be terribly long. You're right. That's why I intend to plant a seed named Resistance here and nurture it for the rest of my life. I want to show the people of this land how to defend themselves against those monsters. I can already see the seed in the eyes of those people. <laughs> you really think you can do it? Why not just give me control, and we can revel in the bloodbath together? What was the memory I just saw? It was a memory of me and a Cloud Knight, stranded on an unfamiliar planet. We crash-landed on a planet occupied by Borison. Just the two of us. I can feel that it was a lonely war. Young people in the village. They died. They died for you. They died because of your big promises. Promising them a life free from the Borison. I tasted their despair before death. They didn't see it coming. And neither will you. We can't stay here. Let's move on to the next village. Why? What's the point? You and your sorry excuse for an army have been fighting for over three decades, and you haven't won a single battle. What you're sowing is not resistance, but despair. This world is hopeless. It's completely infested with packs of Borison. You've seen their numbers, and you know them. You've put your hopes in. They just kneel down and worship the monsters devouring their children and families, calling them their Beastmasters. You beheaded one of the Beastmasters for their sake, but they turned on you because they were scared of the boars and taking revenge. You remember all that, right? I... I do. I remember my first death. The boars and... Cut off my head. But I also remember that if it weren't for a brave youngster who risked his neck to reattach my head and give me a proper burial, I would have disappeared completely. 
I remember everything the people did for me. They left food at the entrance of my cave, fixed my fur coat, and some even joined my resistance. The rest of the Sienjo native's life is still terribly long, and there will be new youngsters who will stand beside me in battle. Time is on our side. <sighs> you said it was a lonely war. No. It wasn't a war filled with loneliness, but with despair. So much despair that I don't want to ever taste it again. <laughs> I'm leaving. Where are you going, Your Highness? I'm returning to my homeland. A distant place beyond the sky. I'm not coming back. But what should we do with you gone? What, what if those wolf demons show up again? They won't, my child. You've wiped out the last of them. But before I go, I need you to do one thing for me. Even though the wolf demons are gone, new monsters will appear in this world. Soon, a demon will appear, donning golden branches and knowing only bloodshed. However, fear not, my children. I'm entrusting you with this sword that's been with me in countless battles. Use the skills I've taught you over the years, and you'll surely defeat that last demon. But that's not all. I need you to construct a stone monument for me. It must be large and sturdy enough to seal the remains of that demon forever. This is a debt you owe me, and you must fulfill it. Do you understand? You lied to them. And you lied to me, too. Oh? You promised that you'd give your body to me when you couldn't handle things anymore. Well, this Sienjo native's life has finally come to an end, my old friend. How about one last chance for revenge? Come and bid me farewell for the final time. He had long since come to some understanding. I could sense a mix of intricate emotions flowing out. It wasn't bloodlust, or anger, or fear. What he had left for you was hope. They've learned how to fight monsters. But there's still one last monster lingering in the world. Kill it, my old friend. He left me there without ever looking back. Heliobi can taste human emotions. How do my emotions taste? My old friend. <laughs> a hint of bitter compassion and a touch of scalding courage. Your heart's deepest desire is to end war once and for all. Now, the war is finally over. Can you hear? 
Even though you can't hear me anymore, my old friend, I'll do everything I can to bring an end to all conflicts in this world. So, this is the past of the Call of Fallen People's Sword of Heroes? You helped the people of that world bring an end to war? No, I did not. I am a weapon, and I only became the cause of more conflicts. Countless monarchs of Kalevala saw me as a symbol of kingship endowed by nature, and they waged wars in order to possess me. I grew tired of their wicked intentions. I didn't want to kill for anyone anymore. So I returned to the stone monument where my master was buried. And since then, no one was able to remove me from it. But you allowed Argenti to take you away? Because even after all this time, I still wanted my master to come home. During the sword gifting ceremony, I felt anguish when I learned that I would be handed over to the most skilled sword master and once again become a tool for killing. My master had engraved his deepest desire into my blade. End war. As a weapon, my purpose was predetermined from the start. I had to become a deadly sword that would relentlessly hack and kill. But once I fulfilled my mission, would I have the right to choose my own destiny like he did? So, I asked the Knight of Beauty to help me break free from this never-ending cycle of bloodshed. These thousands of years have naturally turned into memories of mine. I think I understand the beauty the knight was talking about now. I don't want to be a sword that brings death. My war ended long ago. The years spent as a tombstone were my finest. I've told you everything about my experience with Master Guyan on Kalevala. And now, I'm sure that Miss Yun Li is as moved by the sword's flawless beauty as I was back then. Even though I had heard the legends of this sword from the delegation, delving into its memories was still fascinating. Yun Li, I trust Gu Yin's experiences have changed your mind. That's why Grandpa hid it from me. So I wouldn't make a hasty decision. I always thought a cursed sword infused with a heliobus would only bring rage and slaughter. I never thought someone could leave behind the desire to end war and even change the nature of the cursed sword. <sighs> My position was too extreme. Guyan is truly a sword of heroes. I... I apologize to all of you for my behavior. I'm sorry. Now that we've proven Miss Yun Lee's innocence and found the sword, should we now return it to the arsenal? No. I'm still going to melt down this sword. <laughs> I 
I've heard your true desires, Guyan. I can sense that you're tired of being a sword. Constantly serving new masters and fighting battles you no longer want to be part of. Right? But being a sword is my destiny. I'm doomed to serve some master and fight battles endlessly. Can the wind choose to stop blowing? Can a cloud choose to stop drifting? No. It's the same for me. A creation with a predetermined destiny. That's not true, Guyan. That nameless swordmaster shaped his own destiny. So you can too. I just can't picture my destiny being anything other than that of a sword. Do you remember when you stood alone in front of the Swordmaster's stone monument? People admired you because you carried the memories of the hero. You are no longer a sword. You were a memorial. Later, as I became worn and weathered, the gentle wind would pass through the hollows of my body, creating melodic tones that echoed in the distant mountains. I became a musical instrument then. I miss those times. Can a creation become what it wants to be? <laughs> the answer is yes. I'll grant your wish, Guyan, and transform you into something different. Something different? But this is the prize for the war dance. If the Kalevalan delegation finds out... It... Please, say something, General Huayen. Well, my granddaughter has always been stubborn. Are you really sure about this, Yunli? What do you all think? Fulfilling Master Guyan's wishes is the reason I came to the Sienjo. With the Drilla's blessing, you could turn Master Guyan into a plow. But as long as it fulfills his wish to end war, I support it fully. Then, I'll leave it to you, Yunli. It's been an honor getting to know you like this. The honor is mine. Thank you. Why the long face, my child? Are you feeling regret, perhaps? You were completely determined when melting down the sword. So, why the sudden change of heart? Grandpa, I melted down the prize for the war dance. How are you going to explain this to the lawful? Oh, am I hearing right? This little girl is worried about her grandpa. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> if only I'd talked to you from the beginning, Grandpa. Maybe things wouldn't have escalated like this. But at least Guyan got what it wanted. I have no regrets there. <sighs> when it comes to swords, you... You and your father are cut from the same cloth. So, are you planning to continue melting down the rest of Hong Wong's swords? Yeah. Guyan is unique. But the other cursed swords are still too dangerous for anyone to handle. But... Maybe I'll try to be more patient next time. Be more patient. Well said. Remember what you learned today, because there will be many more situations in the future that will require you to be more patient. Understood. But what about the prize? Well, ever since you showed up at the ceremony, I had a hunch. So I prepared another sword as a backup plan. And don't worry, 
This one has nothing to do with Heliobi. <laughs> That's perfect. By the way, the ambassador from Kalevala and that knight went to Aram Alley. They're looking for a spot to honor the hero. Why don't we go take a look together? Oh, General Huayan. What brings you here? Well, my granddaughter was inspired by the heroic legends told by the Mieka Kibesa, so she dragged me here to take a look. I come from a long line of Kalevalan monument keepers. For generations, my family has guarded the stone monument left behind by the, the nameless hero. Over the centuries, a golden tree sprouted from under the monument, and its branches have never withered. We Kalevalans see it as proof of the hero's existence. Before leaving Kalevala, I took a branch from that golden tree, hoping to plant it here to represent the hero returning to his homeland. That sounds good. We Sienjo people don't make coffins or set up memorials. So I'm sure he would be happy to rest here where life is bustling. The hero had asked our ancestors to carve something into the monument. So I made a copy of it too. While the inscription is pretty worn with age, perhaps you can still make out some of it. I have drifted far from my homeland and am on the brink of death. Yet, I take solace in having honorably fulfilled my duties. Should you feel compassion for me, kind traveler, please take a handful of soil hence and bring it back to the Lawfu. Hm. Mr. Pavo, I wonder if that hero ever left a name in your history? I apologize, but the hero's epic battles happened long ago and he did not leave any name for us to call him. But in our mythology, he came from the heavens, and so we call him the Cloud Knight. Welcome home, Cloud Knight. Now, you can also rest here, Uyen. <laughs> 